Hi guys, Rob here today. I come from Blue Water Samoan Island Resort. As you can see behind me, it's got a beautiful sea view. This is the deluxe sea view room. So I'm going to have a look at this resort in more details. I have been here before, which you can check out my other video if you wish. So there's been some renovations ongoing at the moment, so I can't show you everything, but we'll show you what I can at the moment. So let's take a look at this resort. As you can see, it's a beautiful island just off the coast of the mainland Cebu. Look at those amazing colours surrounding the island. Samoilan Island is quite small, covering just 24 hectares. So looking at a map, the island is located in the southern part of Cebu, as shown as the red pin. I'll zoom up to the island so you can see it better. Not sure of the white band on the Google satellite map. Most of the resort itself is located on the northern and eastern side of the island, basically where all the white sand is showing. To get there from Cebu City, as per Google map, it shows it around three and a half hours away. I took a bus from the southern bus terminal in Cebu City, and from memory it was about 205 peso one way. The resort also offers transfers, prices are shown on the screen. So with the bus, I got dropped off at the highway, and you just have to walk down to the resort's office on the mainland. Hey, welcome, sir. Welcome, drinks. It's a blue water color made of lemon grass. Kayaking, kayaking, paddle golfing. At the office, you'll get a rundown of the resort and what's included with the room rates. Or if you come in as a day tripper, I'll let you know what's included. There's a video presentation guide to the island, which is worth watching. There's boat transfers at certain times only, so make sure you plan around those times. Uh, breakfast and dinner, which is for free. Yeah. And inside the room, there's mini bar fridge. It yeah. has drinks and also snacks inside. Everything is also for free. Okay. So you can consume and it's everything for that. Then it's off to the island. You can see just how close it is to the right there. On this occasion when I got there, the rains had come down. Thankfully it was only for a short time and the sun did come out later. So behind me is the white sandbank, which is the most iconic feature of this island. A lot of people just come to see this and take photos. It does change due to the tides. The sand moves around a bit. I'll try and show you my old video so you can see the differences. But it's just gorgeous, as you can see. So this is the most popular spot on the island to visit when you do get good weather. It's one of the most beautiful sandbanks in the Philippines. Perfect to laze about or just swim in the amazing tropical waters. I did have to get permission to fly the drone here. I had to wait till after 5 p.m. when most people had left. Anyhow, it looks spectacular any time of day. So here's my old video. As you can see, the sandbank looks a bit different to what it does now. During the day, it's pretty packed with tourists and I did notice a lot more since my last visit here. So south of the sandbank, there's some snorkeling opportunities. This is the footage I got from here. The amount of fish and corals was not too bad. On the second day of snorkeling, when I was coming back to the sandbank, the current was quite strong, so keep that in mind. So on the northeastern side of the island is another sandy beach, although not quite as good as the sandbar, as it is a bit more rocky here. And the further down you go on the beach, the more rockier it gets. Nonetheless, it still looks amazing here. As you can see with all the greens and blue colors in the waters, it's just spectacular. So the brown water shown is the lagoon. Next to that is one of the resort swimming pools. And then there's one of the restaurants next to that. The lagoon has a number of activities to do, such as kayaking, that's really fun. And also really relaxing as well. These activities are also available on day use packages. I'll show prices for the day use later on in the video. You can also do some fishing here as well. Some other activities you can do here is biking. There's a set trail to follow. Along the trail there's the old lighthouse and there's a watchtower. It's not the easiest trail to follow. It's quite bumpy. It only took me like 10 or 15 minutes to do if you don't stop much, you just go through the whole track. The resort has two swimming pools. The newer one is down by the lagoon, then there's the older infinity pool, which is one of the most iconic in Cebu, and I have shown this other pool in my previous videos. Just reopened the infinity swimming pool, it was renovated for the last couple of months. The design is still the same if you've been here before, it's just the structure they fixed up a bit. It's still one of the most beautiful swimming pools in Cebu. Look at the view you get. Cheers. For kids, there's a play area. They also have this daily shark feeding area. 
And what do you feed them? Just chicken? Meat. Is that pork or chicken or something? Pork. pork. Okay. There's a cave that has a sign that indicates this may have been one of Japan's wartime caves where they've hid looted treasure. At the back of the cave you can see some white fabric. I don't know if that's a joke to look like a ghost, but I wasn't going to go to the back of the cave and check it out. There's also a grotto that has the Santo Nino and the Virgin Mary set up. So when I stayed, they only had one of the restaurants open. The other one opened just as I was leaving. They did have an a la carte menu, but most of the meals were served as buffet style here. On screen is the a la carte breakfast. This is the buffet lunch shown. The selection of food was okay. There were some local and international cuisines, seafood, desserts and fruits. As I mentioned in my previous video, the buffet food was average. On screen is a buffet breakfast. Again, I thought it was okay. A fair selection of different dishes, including cold cuts, salads, fruit juices, fresh fruits, dishes such as French toast and pancakes, bread, a number of hot dishes such as potato wedges and bacon, and some local dishes as well. There was an egg station with a chef if you wanted to have an omelette. Dinner was also a buffet style. They had different types of themed buffets every night, such as this barbecue night. If you wanted to have a la carte, here's a copy of the menu with prices at the time I stayed. I think it had a pretty good selection of different types of dishes. So to the rooms, in this video I'll show you a few different room types they offer that I stayed at. First, looking at the Blue Water Resorts website, you can get more information on the resort, the facilities and things you can do in the area. If you want to do the day use packages, there's lots of information here. So you can check the activities on the island as well as things to do in the area that they do offer. And of course there's a lot of information on the rooms at the resort. Their site allows you to book online. When booking it has a handy calendar that shows you what's available and what's not. Here you can see the rooms and the starting prices. These are net rates so when you book it adds up the taxes and in this case it was 10,000. Checking Agoda had rates starting from 10,080 but then when you added the taxes it was 12,600 for the same dates. Interestingly enough when I looked at Travago it was shown Agoda from 8572 without taxes but you did have to click through from the home search page as it was showing the higher rate so when you click through and were redirected to Agoda it showed that lower rate. These things just make me really question if you are really getting the best rates on certain websites. Checking hotels combined it had Agoda at a higher rate but when you clicked on it it was at 10,080 rate again without the taxes. TripAdvisor was shown Hotels.com as the cheapest but when you click through at the end it came to 12,600 including taxes so it was the same as Goda. As always I say check multiple websites to check that you're getting the best rate. The deluxe CV rooms are the ones on the left of the screen and face out towards the ocean. This is the balcony view. The rooms are a nice size. It looks simple but contemporary and stylish. It comes with a mini bar and snacks that are all complimentary. Overall, I did like the room. And for this one, sir, this is our what we call the black book, the list of the activities, the massages. So here's the picture of the map for your reference. Okay. Um, also, for the massage, if you want to do it in the morning or in the afternoon, you may do it either in this area, sir, at the lagoon. Yes. Or inside the room. And for the room service, sir, it's until 9 p.m. Bathroom as well was large, clean, and stylish. Inside the wardrobe was a safe and robes. At low tide, the view doesn't quite look as good. The second night, I stayed in the one bedroom villa. So obviously, the villa gives you that extra space. Sir? King size bed. Okay. For the premier deluxe, it's both things and drinks inside here and the snacks. You can consume everything. Oh, complimentary. Yes, for okay. one time. If okay. in case sir, you want a refill, that's the time. Extra pay. Yes. Lower day, I'll eat here, sir. Feel free to call two zero three. We can also um, give you additional water service. Again, you want. furnished in the same type of style 
as the deluxe. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. With the bathroom in the villa, it comes with a bathtub. Again, it's a large bathroom. And with this bathroom, you get a few more toiletries in the bathroom. It comes with two basins. Outside the villa, there's a splash pool and there's a little yard. It also offers some lovely views of the ocean. So on the far side of the beach is a resort's glamping area. You can see the tents there on the left. So these face out towards the beach. So these are my personal butlers. I get two, right? Do yeah, I? Two. Uh, Brian and Greg. With the glamping packages, you also get butlers, as mentioned, to look after you. The more unique experiences here is the glamping packages that they do. It's from March until September when the weather's obviously better. I haven't done this for many years. Having a look at the tents, there's been some slight improvements, which I'll show you in a sec. So let's take a look. So from my previous stay here where I did the glamping, the tents are a little bit nicer. And from memory, the tents seem larger. And there's a few more amenities in the tent. Just roll it up. Then this is purified drinking water, sir. And you can also, your keto, you can make it hot, the glass, and coffee, and tea. tea. Your amenity is here. And your towels there. Okay. Umbrella, there's a rain, or it's hot. Slipper. Slipper. Okay. Couple slipper. The mini bar is free. Everything's, also. Yeah. Everything's free. Okay. Then during at 11 p.m., sir, or 12 midnight, the change, changing power, change power is automatically off. So please to, uh, turn on again. Then okay, so 11 o'clock at night I have to yeah. do it myself. Okay, yeah. okay. The key for the safety okay. deposit box. Cool. At the moment it's quite pleasant in the tent. I'll just see how it goes in the afternoon when the heat of the day really hits. Last time I just had a fan. This time you have the fan as well as the aircon unit. And it did make staying in the tent more comfortable. It makes for a, a better experience than before. You also get great views from the tent, as you can see. A few meters away is the toilet block. There are three showers. So it is a shared bathroom with other glampers. Inside there's a basin, a separate shower and toilet. Plus tomorrow, you have two choices. Buffet at the Pulu restaurant or breakfast seat meal here in the glamping. So you can choose seat A, Western or Filipino. You have the, uh, do have the choices sir. And for your lunch tomorrow, sir. You have the choices for tomorrow. Lunch, picnic, basket or a buffet. I'll do this one, B. Seat B. So what time would you like to serve your dinner, sir? 7 um. to 8.30 p.m. So how about your activity, sir? For the bushcrafting, sir, 3.30 to 5 p.m. So this is the survival training courses you do. Here they're making a trap to catch chickens or birds. And this one is the chair. A chair. chair. You also trap the chicken at their neighbors. <laughs> How long does it take to make the trap? Ten minutes? Ah, oh, it's pretty quick. So the first attempt of the trap was a failure. The bird got away. <laughs> No chicken tonight. We got hungry. But he did do it again and it worked. <laughs> I wanted to collapse in the, on the video. No, collapse. <laughs> the seat worked as well and held our weight. The last bushcraft thing was the fire making. In this exercise, I learned where there's smoke, there's not necessarily fire, and it was a failure. <laughs> Oh, I can see smoke. Yeah, smoke. I saw them go past, they go past, but they The boys tried hard, but it was only smoke that we could get. The second island activity that I chose was the advanced guided trekking. They say it takes around one and a half hours, but since I did this on my previous visit, we were able to walk through it much quicker. So we did it in 29 minutes, which included some time to take some video on the way. I wanted to mention the food with the glamping. The barbecue dinner was delicious. And that was my favorite meal of my whole stay. Finished the night with a campfire under the full moon. It was just awesome. Breakfast was pretty good as well. So summing up the whole experience, 
The island is just amazing. Beautiful, peaceful, serene. Everything you'd want to experience from a island getaway. The stunning colors of the water. It's just paradise. It is a fair trip from Cebu City. This is my third time to visit here and it just seems to get a little bit better each time. The actual resort is excellent, but it's not five star, it's rated three and a half star. So keep that in mind. I like having the choices from glamping right up to a upmarket villa and keeping in mind the three and a half star rating. Mix that with a beautiful island, it just makes it a wonderful place to holiday at. I still think it's on the pricey side, but I'll leave that up to you to decide on that. There's lots of activities to do, and even if you just do the day trip, it's a great way to experience the island. Overall, a fantastic place. Definitely worth a visit in Cebu. For more travel videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.